we have created enough all around now. Right? Enough number of schools and colleges and all have been created. Okay? We only need to you know, prepare the teachers now. Teachers who have the right understanding and right feeling. Everything else is already more than what is required. So this is about education and sanskar. <coughs> okay. Let's see if there is any question on this. Otherwise we'll <coughs> talk about this. Sanyam and health. this feeling of sanyam in the cell, then you take care of the body, which will result into the health of the body. Right? This definition they have already made. You know? So I am not going to write on that. But what I am going to ask here is that health and sanyam both are to be ensured, which one will come first? Sanyam or health? Sanyam, right? This is important. Okay. So first comes Sanyam, then comes health. And this interesting thing is that today in the whole of society and education we are not talking about Sanyam <coughs> at all. Right? For example, when you eat food, okay, you, eat, you eat food with the nurturing of the body in mind or taste of the food? Taste of the food. <laughs> <laughs> this taste is the need of the self or need of the body? Self. Okay. This nurturing is the need of the self or need of the body? Body. Body. Okay. So when you are eating, Keeping the nurturing of the body in mind, right? This is feeling of sanyam. If you are eating, just keeping taste of the food, right? And therefore you tend to overeat. <laughs> Will it come under sanyam? <coughs> no. So now you can see that even this feeling of sanyam which is fundamental to this health okay, is not talked about, is not understood, is not practiced. As a result what is happening? If you are eating for taste, then you tend to over it. And if you are over eating, what do you think? Will it give rise to health or ill health? Ill health. In fact, more, you know, large number of people now are suffering from overeating. Right? More people are suffering from overeating than starving. In America, the greatest number of people suffering from, you know, disease is that of obesity. Now you are telling my details. And? <laughs> <laughs> you are telling my details. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have some honorable Tashu Sharap to me, isn't it? <laughs> yes? Shifted. Shifted. <laughs> Shifted the stories. Oh. <laughs> you see, what I am talking is a very common thing. 
But it is so common that everybody starts thinking that I am talking about him. <laughs> but sometimes uh, when, uh, when you say that uh, human uh, yes, overeat because of the taste, sometimes I have experienced under eating also. Because of the taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when you don't like the taste, yes. you do undereating. When you like the taste, yes. you do overeating. Right? And they make up for it. Yes. And then the wife starts getting worried. But <laughs> <laughs> required for keeping slim fit. That is also a drink. Under eating for keeping slim fit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I do it consciously, that is, I, uh, you know, I uh, keep the nurturing of the body in mind and I also keep the taste of the food in mind. That means it serves both the purpose, the need of the body and the these are the cells. Then it is fine. But what happens is that when you are not having this feeling of sayam, that then that responsibility towards the body is forgotten. And as a result, okay, you start eating, keeping the taste in mind. And when you are eating, keeping the taste in mind, and you are trying to get happiness out, out of it, right? Then the problem is that you want to get the continuity, and the continuity is not possible. So you go on eating and eating, right? Because the taste is, you know, is like by you. But then you spoil your health. In fact, you know, I keep quoting this example of, there was a person called Nero. He was the king of the Rome. So it is said that he was very fond of eating. Okay. So much so that he will go on eating and eating and then he will full up to the neck. Right? And he cannot eat anymore. So he had kept some, you know, this bad okay. Some doctors who would help him to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> he will vomit and then eat fresh. <laughs> but that was a very surprising thing to me and I used to quote this example till I came across one of my friend's brother right? <coughs> he had this you know, an operation of the gland bladder and then he came back I went to meet him and interestingly it is the same family which example I gave about the uncle right? this is about the younger brother of this friend of mine <coughs> And this is, you know, supposed to be a very prestigious family, eh? and this is all it is happening there. <laughs> so when I went to visit him, I said, what happened? He said, I had an operation of gallbladder. So I said, oh, very sorry, you know, very unfortunate. How did it happen? He said, no, no, I knew about it. I said, how did you know about it? He said, you know, my doctor had told me very long back, <coughs> at least a month back, because I had severe stomach pain. And when I went to the doctor, he said, you stop eating chaat, you know. Chaat, you know? It's very spicy, you know. <coughs> this is food that is made and sold. It is very common in India. I don't know whether it is common in Bhutan or not. You know. So made of this potato and all these things. You know. <coughs> so, it is supposed to be too spicy and you know, very tasty. Kutka is one of the type of chaat. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Mm -hmm. It's one of the type of chaat. Kutka. 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 So this doctor had told him that you already have this, you know, what is it called? Stone. Kidney. Stone in the gallbladder, not kidney. So you are having kidney, you know, stone in the gallbladder, and stop eating this chart, okay? Because it might create a serious problem for you. Okay? 
So he said, then I couldn't stop it. <coughs> so what I used to do is, every day evening, evening, he will go and eat cha, come back and then vomit. <laughs> <laughs> because he made his own calculation, that it will harm the body only if it goes inside. <laughs> as far as the test is concerned, you can take the test every time and then come back and vomit. And this man has been doing it for one month. But then some part of it must be going in. <laughs> it created problem and he was to be operated in on this. And I was sitting there, you know, talking to these people. And then one of his friends came. Okay. This, you know, who was operated, his friend came. And he was very heavy, you know. Must be around 150 kg or so. Very disproportionate in size. You know. <laughs> <laughs> his name was Raja. So he's asking my friend, you know, no, he's first asking that person, his friend, he said, What are you eating this day? He said, You know, this chapati without ghee and this vegetable of lauki. You know. He said, Oh, how can you do it? How can you eat this? It's so tasteless thing. Then he turns to my friend and says, Let me tell you very frankly, if I have this problem, okay, call four people. Okay. I would prefer to die rather than eat this roti and chakra. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's where we are, you know. So the very feeling of Sayyam is not there. And then we are trying to keep the health. Okay? And it does not work. But if you have the feeling of Sayyam, and then you want to ensure the health with this feeling of Sayyam, then the first thing which is important is your food, right? your air, your water, all that you take as intake, right? And then your daily intake, right? This is the first important thing. So the intake and the daily duty. Okay? The second important thing is the labor that you do with rest of nature. Okay? And if you don't do the labor exercise, right? <coughs> labor is what you do with rest of nature, right? Planting a tree, right? or milking the cow, all these things. Okay. So whatever you do with the rest of nature, that we call work. Okay. So if I am doing the work, <coughs> it is called labor. Okay. If I am not doing the labor, then I have to do exercise. <coughs> because some movement in the body is very essential. In fact, today if you look at the people, the way they are going about, they think that this labor is a very inferior thing. Right? So if they have to ride a bicycle, okay, they think that it is very, you know, against their prestige. So they will not like to buy ride a bike which costs you 3,000 rupees and which can take you somewhere. Right? You prefer to buy a bicycle paying 30,000. <laughs> Okay, and which does not take you anywhere. <laughs> so many people now have this bicycle in the in their house. Okay, this is standing bicycle okay. for exercise. Okay. <laughs> and they are costing some thirty thousand rupees, right? Yeah. And you ride on that bike, and it takes you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the difference between labor and non-labor. <laughs> so labor has two outcomes. One is that you are producing something out of it. The other is there is exercise for the body. Right? So if you are riding a bicycle, right, it takes you somewhere. So some work is done, right? And the exercise of the body also takes place. Right? But if you are riding that 30,000 bike, rupees bike, right? 
which is standing on a stand press, you don't reach any weight. So that is the difference between labor and material. So labor is essential to keep your body healthy. And this, it is also essential to produce what is required. But if you are not doing labor, at least exercise is necessary. Right? This is the second thing. The third thing is, if despite this, if there is some imbalance, this asana and pranayam, this asana is supposed to, you know, maintain the balance in different parts of the body, right? And this pranayam is supposed to balance your breathing, right? So this is balancing the breathing and this is balancing the different parts of the body. So this is third thing that we need to do. And still if you have some problem, then you need to take some medicine or some treatment in terms of surgery and things like that. What do you think? This is the proper order? Or you start from here? I think people start from here. They start, they cannot sleep, and then sleeping pills, then, then they you know, need tranquilizer, and then the medicines uh, which are supposed to be curing for your you know, disease and health. Uh, are so sour in taste, bitter, and it's covered with uh, all cheap uh, papers, and then the cigarettes which are poison and drugs, so beautifully covered and decorated. You know, we are tempted to like chocolates and then other. So what do you think? This is the correct order, starting with Sanyam, <coughs> then with health. In health, starting with you know, ensuring right intake and daily routines, then the labor and exercise, then this asana and pranayam, and finally, if required, if at all required, medicine and treatment. This is the correct order, or it is right to start from here. Yeah, now most of the people start from here. If you have pain in your knees, okay, they immediately say replace this knee. Okay. <laughs> 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 they dictate the doctor something. Give me one capsule. An example to share. Uh, from Dechin Chilling Monastery, uh, Gumba, there's some. Uh, there was one old lady, uh, I think she's, she's still, I, I can see her coming around, just making around in the stupa. She was uh, hospitalized, so the doctor said that she, you got a cancer in your leg now, now the leg needs to be cut off. Then she prayed to the doctor that please don't cut my leg, I would like to wear the tie like that. Because the doctors were, I think, uh, insistent. So, in the meantime, His Majesty, the fourth king, visited in the Tipu General Hospital. And then she was lucky enough to request His Majesty, please don't cut my hair, uh, my leg, because the doctors advised so. And uh, I would rather die you know, with all my four, uh, two legs and two <laughs> arms. So, His Majesty then uh, instructed doctors, please don't. She has already decided to give her good food, treat her well, and then uh, don't cut her neck. After 35 years, she's still, uh, you know, with her neck. She's breaking her arm. So sometimes it's very around. difficult, no? Uh, to immediately jump on the treatment like medicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, the very common thing, you know, this delivery, we all know that it was a very common thing, okay, for delivery to take place in the home, right? And it was so natural, okay? 
Now this itself has become such a difficult thing. In this city, more than 50% of the delivery is taking place by cesareans. So they don't even wait for the time to be you know, over. They do the cesareans before because it makes them money. More than 50% of the cases now, you know, this delivery is by cesarean. And it is creating a lot of trouble for the mother, you know. And the child, the child also. Because of money. In, in Hyderabad, they take, the doctor doesn't decide. Most of the time, the parents decide that this is the right mahurat yes, for my child. Yes, indeed. Time. Good day. Good day. Very bad for the time. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So, I will leave it for you to think over and see whether your priority goes this way <coughs> or the other way. And which is the right priority. Now, let's talk about this production and work. So, I have to find the work and the you know, production. Work means labor a human being does on the rest of nature. Right? So, what you do on the rest of nature is called work. What you do with human being is behavior. Right? The production takes place only when you are working with the rest of nature. So if you are working with the machine, something is produced. If you are working with the plants, right, something is produced. When you are working with the soil, something is produced. Right? But when you are behaving with human being, nothing is produced. Right? So when I am talking to you, right, all these five days, right, you think something is produced? No material thing is produced. Right? It is an activity at the level of consciousness. Right? It is leading to right understanding and right feeling. And it is important. Right? But we should be very clear that this is not producing any physical facility. So behavior is something which does not produce any physical facility. The return of the behavior is in terms of mutual happiness. Return of the work is in terms of some physical facility. Right? And that is what we are calling as production. <coughs> so, body falls under the things here? So, you will work through your body only, right? Which is also a physical thing. So, you will work through your body with something, you know, which is the rest of nature. If you do that, then something will be produced. Right? That is called production. What I am doing with the rest of nature is called work. So only work will lead to production, not behavior. And if you look at the way we have organized the society today, okay, the production is taking place out of the work. But 
we are giving a very unbalanced return to the behavior. Okay, as compared to the work. So a farmer who is doing the work and making the production is getting the list in the society, right? And so-called experts who are just doing the behavior, right? Is the highest. <laughs> they are not producing anything. Like a doctor giving consultancy. Is it a behavior or a work? Behavior, right? The teacher, right? Giving knowledge. Is it behavior, right? But you can see such an imbalance is created. And that does not mean that the behavior is not important. Behavior is also important, right? For human beings, behavior is also important. Work is also important. Both of them are important, right? Therefore, to create so much of imbalance in the society, right? it's not something which is correct. And that is why those who are involved with production are trying to run away from production. I have been told that similar thing is happening in Bhutan, you know, that the farmers or the people from village are migrating to the city right? and many of the fields you know, in the village are left unattended. <coughs> this is what is happening in India also. Because you have created an off balance, this imbalance has been created between the people who are doing work and the people who are doing behavior. And this is so significant now that this shift, you know, is taking place from those who are involved in work to those who are involved in behavior. And the unfortunate thing is that those who are involved in behavior are also not getting that return of mutual happiness. Because that is the real return of behavior, right? Behavior with human beings. So you are not getting that return of your behavior in that of mutual happiness. Right? Those who are working are not getting their return in terms of the physical facility. Getting in a physical facility. That is the way the imbalance is created. So the work would mean a labor human being does on the rest of nature. Production means things will get out of the work. Right? When you talk about this production and work, okay, there are two important questions which need to be addressed. Okay. The first question is about important question is how to produce. What do you think? These two questions are important when you are talking about production and work. <coughs> are they important? Are they not important? <coughs> Today when we talk about technology, right, engineering, production, right, do we address to these two questions? What to produce and how to produce? Not necessary. Right? Let me write down the answer, then you will see what is the meaning of it, right? What to produce? We have already looked into the answer. Necessary physical facility.
what do I need to produce? Necessary physical facility for nurturing, protection and dietetization of the body. Now what do you think? You have to produce this or you can produce anything. <laughs> what do we need to produce? Necessary physical facility for nurturing, protection and dietetization of the body? Or you produce anything? <laughs> 